I find it um, kind of difficult myself to describe the film to other people because I don't want to really give so much information away because the way the film gives information about the story is really one of the cool things about it. So I want to hear from you. How do you describe the film to people? Um, yeah, it is quite a... The film... Um, is sort of styled in a way that it the information is trickled and I too have a problem describing what the film is to people because there's so much layers in it so much stuff that goes in I mean the best way to say to describe the film is just going to the uh, I think grabbing the essence of it it's about a man who's trying to save his door I think that's basically if people ask me. I have so many different versions of it because I, I too uh, I discover some stuff later on, or I, I remember some stuff when I, you know, when, when I was writing it. So it's, it's, it's not an easy film, I guess, for me to 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 um, explain. But uh, in, if you if you ask me um, to pick words, so I would say it's a film about uh, disconnection and connection. I think that's what. I it sounds like the story changed quite a bit in the process of um, filmmaking. So after you had a written script down, did the story change significantly at all while you were shooting? Yeah, sort of, but the essence was still there. It's just situations came up and you needed to be thinking on your feet. And, uh, you know, there's a combination of scenes that were that um, that needed to you know uh, um, that had to come together to 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 uh, you know be more efficient in telling the story. So I think that yeah, it, it sort of it was on the spot, but I never really lost what the film was about. It's I think it's that's I I love that I it's a benefit of being a writer. Because you know what the story is about, so wherever you can change, you know how it affects the beginning and the end, and how it affects the acts and how it affects the journey. So it's it's I think it's I like I like when it happens. So um, when you write a particular scene, often do you have the shot in mind instantly of how you want to play it out, or is it more like you kind of feel it in the moments of shooting it? Um, yeah, I sort of the benefit of writing and directing is also you're always visualizing. Because you're always you're gonna be adding information, and the director and you sees, oh, maybe you should shoot it from this way because the film, the scene is about this, and not about what they're talking about. It's about something else. So you're you're already thinking about that. But on set, everything changes. When you go on set and you see, oh, there's a wall there, uh, or the, it doesn't help what you're you're trying to 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 to, to say. So you change it. So I think yeah. So it's it's a revolving thing. How do you uh, communicate with your cinematographer when establishing these shots? Um, I think uh, we have a conversation long, long before you know everything. Starts. He's he's probably the first person, apart from the producer, who comes on you know comes early on in the in the, in the film process. So uh, we talk about a lot of things. I tell him um, what I you know I'm, I I want the film to look like, and I tell him um, the style. Like um, how the lighting. I'm a big um, one of the, the the things that I've sort of learned from my cinematographer, which are many things. But he introduced me to appreciating paintings, and I I normally refer to paintings when I when I want to uh, set up a scene. I say, hey, Leon, what about uh, this Caravaggio painting? I, I love the lighting. I love what it's hiding in there. And the me and and you know the, the symbolism, and I want you to. Uh, so he does that. So he perfects. Yeah, he just perfects the ideas that I, that I give him. What inspired the story? What inspired the story? I think um, just um, when I finished my first film, I, I I kept on going back to this short film I wrote, a long a uh, long time ago, about um, a traditional healer in New Zealand, 
which was a woman. And I wanted to, you know, I wanted to explore that a bit more. But I wanted to have a modern version, more interesting version, tell it in an interesting way. And uh, at, also at the same time, I was also thinking about uh, anti-heroes. I, I've been watching a lot of anti-hero films. I really love. And I wanted to write a film about anti-hero. And the last element was um, um, healing the anti-hero and um, a ghost. I uh, wanted to write a horror. <laughs> so it's just a combination of these things that I, 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 I tried sort of uh, writing just one, using one element, a like ghost story, but it doesn't, didn't feel right to me. So I, I went back to these two, uh, three ideas and I found a story that would carry through. Yeah. So the inspiration. There's, there's quite a lot of, um, I, so, I suppose you can say, genre mixing that goes on with that. Um, how conscious were you of getting that balance right? Um, yes, I, I, yeah, again, it's just going back to, um, to um, uh, I, 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 for instance, the ghosts. Uh, I, if I had pushed the ghosts with special effects a bit more, it might have changed the, 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 how the film went out. So it's, I wanted to make it, to have this feeling. And in order to do that, you have to be, to humanize the characters. And, and if you stick there, if you continue on that journey, you will, you will hold on to this sort of feel. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, I was quite aware I didn't want to make a scary, spooky story or a melodrama or anything. I just wanted to make a film that felt different. Mm. The, um, the Orator was your feature debut. What was the one lesson, if you can give us one lesson that you learned from making that film? And applied it to this one. Um, I think um, the one lesson is make sure you you um, you do your work as the writer. I think everything falls into place when your your director will struggle if you if you don't do your writing properly. <laughs> I think yeah, it's just being more open and um, and understanding all the avenues that you can take the story and uh, but, but also being true to what you, you initially set out to write, to do. Do you think you could write a screenplay and then give it to another director? Like, take this film for example, do you think you could be feel comfortable giving it to another director? Uh, yeah, I think another director would do a magnificent job uh, interpreting it in a different way and creating it. But yeah, a lot of my stuff is only, you know, it's only 50% on the page. All the other stuff is you're, you're feeling it. So when you're on set, you read it and then you get that feeling and that's what you need to portray on screen. So, yeah. What films and filmmakers do you admire? Um, a lot. Um, I'm a big fan of uh, Jeff Nichols, um, Michael Mann, um, Paul Thomas Anderson, I don't know who else. Yeah, Spielberg, Jackson, even Tarantino. <laughs> yeah, I, I, and you know, and even the the classics like uh, Ozu, and it depends on on what I'm trying on, on the film that I'm writing. Like for this film, I was I was I studied um, uh, There Will Be Blood, and just trying to get the essence of a character, you know, an antihero, and you know, so I study a lot of those sort of. Filmmakers. Now there's one thing I want to talk about and I hardly ever talk about it because a lot of people, they, to put it bluntly, they find it boring. It's that category in the Oscars that people tend to skip over and that's sound design. But I find sound design in this film just so, so makes so much of why the mood works and why the undertones of the themes really resonate. Mm. Um, because it it it's purposely meant to shake you, but not in that spooky way. So how do you um, approach sound design and communicate with sound designers? Um, well, fortunately, I, re I had a really good <laughs> I, um, Mike Hedgy, uh, Hedgy um, and Tim Rebel. And so um, it's all about um, um, being clear on what, what you're, 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 you're trying to portray, you know. I, 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 I felt this film needed to be quiet, but I, I'm, 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 I'm such a fan of Tim, Tim's music. 
then I and and what he creates, I I felt it added more layers to it. Yeah, and um, I think it's just the people that um, that, uh, that are in the, that, that sound team that we sort of feed of what we get from the screen and just and try to be, yeah, try to tell the story the, the best way we can. You're, you're quite a fan of, um, of keeping things quiet. Why is that? I think quiet is, 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 uh, silence is, 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 is um, what you call it, more interesting. Um, I think it it says a lot. Um, and I think and I and I, most of the directors I admire use silence. Like uh, I'm a big fan of uh, Nicholas Riffing Win Winning Riff. I'm a big fan of it, and he uses uh, he the way he uses silence is fantastic. My Japanese films have used quite a lot of silence as well. So I'm a, I, I think it portrays more information than it makes the, the, the audience uh, engage and makes them want more, want to understand more. Then it's it easier to, to make a sound and, and translate it to the, to the audience. So you get it. But if you leave it out, they'll, they'll have more interpretations of what, what you're trying to say. Yeah, something like that. What do you want to see more from um New Zealand cinema. More variety. More of us looking deeper and you know, studying ourselves a bit more. I think we were too trying to adapt to American styles of you know, when you watch um the old filmmakers like uh, not old but Murphy, Jackson, you know, the, the old Jack uh Campion, uh, Tomahori, there's an accent there. Kiwi accent there, not in terms of that, but the film. When you look at that and you look now, that that we've sort of gone away from that. But I think it's it's part of you know, film needs to make money, and that's what people are trying to do. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I, th I think just branching out and, and be risky, and make even more. You know, you, I think taking risk on directors, you know, to make risky stuff is, 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 is a good thing. You know, you, you won't, you know, Taika, you know, look at Taika, where he coming from, you know, people took a risk and now he's, he's in Hollywood. So, I, mean, I think that's it, it's just branching off and trying, people trying different things to reach, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go.